first. We are tonight monitoring this situation that's going on and ongoing in Syria as the president now is expected to respond with force to the recent gas attacks that we know took place there. We've seen the images. Now, make no mistake, President Trump is a man of his word. And is the United States supposed to stand by and watch Assad using chemical weapons on men, women, and children? Should that go unanswered? Now, sadly, the same could not be said for President Obama when he was on the world stage. Remember, he drew a line in the sand. You might have forgotten because he did nothing. We have communicated in no uncertain terms with every player in the region that that's a red line for us and that there would be enormous consequences if we start seeing movement on the chemical weapons front uh, or the use of chemical weapons. That would, uh, that would change my calculations. Uh, significantly. And after Assad crossed that red line and continued to gas his own people, remember when the Obama administration, they struck a deal. John Kerry told us 100% of those chemical weapons were going to be removed from Syria. And then they declared diplomatic victory. You might remember. We were able to find a solution that actually removed the chemical weapons that were known from Syria in a way that the use of force would never have accomplished. Russia has been constructive in helping to remove 100 percent of the declared chemical weapons from Syria. Uh, in fact, uh, that was an agreement we made months ago, and it never faltered even during these moments of conflict. People may criticize us for not having uh, uh, launched missiles against uh, Assad after chemical weapons uh, had been used, but keep in mind why we didn't. We didn't because you they got rid of did. the chemical weapons. And that, in fact, was very important. Wishful thinking or willful ignorance. Either way, even former Secretary of State uh, under Bill Clinton, Madeleine Albright, well, was calling out Obama's Middle East failure. Take a look. Donald Trump says this is Barack Obama's fault because the first time this happened, Barack Obama did not use military action against Assad's regime. Do, do you think he's right about that? No, I don't. I mean, I do wish Barack Obama did put down a red line, and I personally wish that uh, we had followed through on that. Can America stand by as innocent men, women, and children are being gassed? What should happen? Now, of course, I'm not talking about in any way an invasion of any kind, but Assad. Those weapons have to be removed. When America's promises are empty and its leaders are weak and ineffective like Obama, we see what happens. Chaos, death, destruction, and the world becomes less safe. We do have some good news tonight that you probably won't hear about in the mainstream media. Yeah, Donald Trump strikes again after weeks of tough talks and predictions that China's never going to negotiate on trade. Yeah, the president of China has now announced his country plans to significantly lower certain tariffs on automobiles, which is good for American workers, and that they'd be working towards preserving intellectual property rights of Americans, which is another good thing. Two key concessions that the Trump administration was seeking. Good news for American business. Good news for our auto industry. And earlier today, the president reached out to the president of China on Twitter. He wrote, quote, very thankful for the president of China's kind words on tariffs and automobile barriers. Also, his enlightenment on intellectual property and technology transfers. We will make great progress together. And also tonight, the Facebook CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, he was grilled on Capitol Hill today. He faced 44 senators, two different committees. We'll have more on that later in the show. But first, joining us now to react to our top story, Mueller's runaway investigation, Fox News contributors Jason Chaffetz, Sarah Carter, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Uh, Greg, I'll start with you. You have referred to the seizing of Michael Cohn's attorneys as an affront to our legal system and our justice system. And it shows just how unprincipled Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein are. Um, you know, they knew it was outside the scope of the authority of the special counsel, so they gave it to somebody else to do their dirty work. I suspect this was an effort to provoke the president into doing something uh, rash that would hurt himself. Uh, but he's too smart for that. He's, he's not going to do that. Um, but it, Think about what's at, at risk here. Well, it's here. a trap. Don't you think it's a trap oh, it's, in a it, lot of ways? It's surely a trap, as is a trap of sitting down with Robert Mueller uh, to answer questions. The president should never under any circumstances do that. Why answer questions about a non-crime called collusion? There's no evidence of it. And the firing of Comey, the president has a constitutional right to do that, and he should not be uh, forced to answer questions about it. 
So, you know, mm -hmm. Mueller is all well, about that's be a showdown. traps. That, that's now going to become, and I said, they need to prepare for, to take this all the way to the Supreme right. Court. Absolutely. Uh, 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 Congressman, let, let me go to you. And, you know, maybe we need a special prosecutor, and maybe he can work in conjunction with maybe the Southern District of New York, and maybe we can send him to the offices of the Department of Justice and the FBI that have been stonewalling and slow walking 1.2 million documents and missing deadlines and subpoenas by Congress and only handing over 3,600 of the 1.2 million documents. Maybe we can get it that way. Maybe Robert Mueller can send a raid in for that. <laughs> It, it, it's absolutely embarrassing, this Department of Justice. They appointed this John Lausch, who's out of Chicago, to, to produce these documents. I saw an interview he did with Brett Baer where he said they're going to work to provide the relevant documents. The relevant documents are all of the documents. If you're produced a subpoena, you comply with all of it. It's not optional. You don't get to hand you're pick wrong. this. If this you're is not the deep a subpoena, state saying... Congressman, no, you delete them and you acid wash your hard drive. What are you talking about? That's what you do if they you know, subpoena they, documents. You acid wash it. The inspector general, going back on Hillary Clinton, the inspector general found classified information in a non-classified setting. And what did they do to Hillary Clinton? They gave her top aides and attorneys immunity. They played nice. They just let Cheryl it sit Mills, there. Yep. And then when it's Donald Trump... It, 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 yeah, they give them immunity. When it comes, though, to Donald Trump, no-knock raids, it, you know, with four different sites, it's a totally <laughs> complete different set of, of tactics. All right, Sarah... Go ahead. I, I, I know, was going to ask you. I was going to tell you this. Well, I, I just really quickly, you know, the, the inspector general requested all information on particular people involved in the Hillary Clinton investigation, which was from 2016 to 2017. Everything. He wanted all their texts, all their phone records, all their documentation on all their cases. So that became the 1.2 million loaded documents that he received. Of those, I've been told roughly 35 to 40,000 deal directly deal directly with the investigation now what's been happening and you are exactly right there um, uh, Jason was that they had taken uh, and redacted things that they should have never redacted remember with Rudy Contreras the judge yeah. they redacted other issues you know there's a lot of issues right now going on in Congress they're saying why are you redacting things that are relevant so I, I agree turn it over let Congress see it if there's something that you cannot show if it deals with a different case completely Completely, then hold that back, but turn over everything to Congress. But Sean, how is it possible, Sarah, Greg Sean, Jarrett? This is a yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It's a it's a closed case with no grand jury. There is absolutely no reason that Congress shouldn't be able to see everything that the inspector general is able to see on a closed case. By the way, the person that doesn't want that to happen the most is Rod Rosenstein. Exactly. Yeah. Appointed Mueller, who also yeah. would be witness A. All right, I want to ask Greg th this question. How is it possible that we started off with Trump-Russia collusion and we ended up at Stormy Daniels and raiding the <laughs> office of the attorney. You know, help me out here. I know well, you're a lawyer. I'm that's what's so incredibly confounding about this. Look, anybody can negotiate a contract. It's perfectly permissible to pay money to somebody to go away, crawl back into your hole. And that appears to be what happened. It, it, at worst, it's a campaign violation, which is almost always just a civil penalty. But think about this. Cohen was also an officer of the Trump Organization. He had the power to act on his own. And it, it may be altogether true that the president knew nothing about it. If so, that's not a campaign violation. He's acting in the interests of the organization. So to me, this is a lot of nothing. All right. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, we have so much ground to cover. When we come back, Rush Limbaugh's take on the idea of President Trump firing Robert Mueller. What does he think about that? Also, professor, legal attorney, Alan Dershowitz, who met with the president, joins us next.